Okay, so we got day three of my 30 day. Day three of my 30 day world tower system. What is mystical material has value in your world? Okay, well, hang on. Well, this, this one's a bit tricky. This is a bit tricky of a question. When it comes to mystical material, what do you mean by mystical material? What do they mean? Well, they're implying, they are applying this to a fantasy world setting. So if you have a world where a certain type of gemstone or crystal magnifies the capabilities of psionics or magic, then it's a, that would be a mystical material. Or perhaps some sort of uh, mana or magical weave that you can absorb or, or uh, obtain that will increase or enhance your magic abilities. Those are just potential throw out there. In a less magical world or a more mundane world or highly technologically uh, advanced futuristic society system, uh, we still have what we consider mystical materials. For my would-be Stellar Frontiers, the, game, uh, the, 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 the house lord uh, has to mine and gather raw resources, which are called mineral resources. And to get these mineral resources uh, that you explore the planets, the moons, the asteroids in your systems, uh, one of the reasons for exploring the space around your settled, uh, your, your colony system is to find the rare elements. Now, the ironic, the irony of it is certain base elements on the periodic chart are going to be rarer than others. And that's thus their placement in the random rolled, less than random rolled uh, location chart for discovering mineral resources. That said, then there's this neo mechanic that's hard to quantify. That some players, some GMs, some gamers have a knack for getting high rolls or getting low rolls, so to speak. And the most, and for them, they may encounter a numerous deposits of a rare substance that's rare to all the other people they know that's uh, playing in the same game universe as them. And uh, when I had my, my beta house test, uh, one of my biggest problems was fi finding a raw aluminum and uh, where uh, several of my uh, beta testers just was stumbling over the stuff. There's advantages to this. The disadvantage is obvious. To a starter house that doesn't have connections to neighboring player ran houses, then you don't have the this needed base material that goes into a lot of manufactured materials. And it makes your, get your job a little harder, your game a little tougher to get those uh, minerals or those, those materials you need to manufacture stuff. Things like ship components and buildings, i.e. builds, and to meet industrial needs, to meet your base uh, demand of your planetary exchange so you make more money than you lose and if you have access to a neighboring player who you conduct trade with or can conduct trade with or an NPC neighbor that you can conduct trade with you can then either exchange cer certain strategic materials that you have or strategic manu uh, 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 mineral resources that you have in abundance and they lack for the stuff they have in abundance that you lack or you can outright purchase it from them. The stopgap measure is the random ship traffic that comes through your each end of each colonized system that you control and those merchants randomly rolled for said materials may or may not have materials for sale and may have it in large or small quantities based off of your your house ranking level and what you roll so it's one of those things where you know isn't it, it's not exactly a mystical material part two of this in stellar frontiers is the exotic materials exotic resources the rare rare things these are what you as a house lord as the player while you're caught while you're 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 exploring the worlds and moons and star systems in your region and exploring and expanding your borders you will encounter roles that would say you've discovered a rare element 
or a rare or an exotic plant or an exotic animal that in and of itself may not mean much. The game rules allow you as a house lord to construct or to assemble uh, research teams. You can build a research facility and it's a very expensive and, and uh, uh, material demanding build especially for a very younger a very young house but it's it is doable and you can also acquire secondary less efficient means of doing research and in the process you would take this find and you would send a sample to your lab your lab would then spend five cycles that's five game turns to determine whether or not it's of, of some interest at this point uh, you would get those five rounds get you a roll of, at a percentage so let's say you get a 15 percent or less chance that it is an actual exotic or in this case mystical material that has some unusual uh, effect or ability or component at that point you make your roll and if you're successful then you continue forward in this exploration part of developing the research material. Or if you fail, of course, it's then discovered that it's a very, uh, uh, an exotic material in and of itself has no immediate value. And you can either write it off or just put it down in your notes as this exotic tree with this weird substance. Now, I'll give you two examples. One of my early player beta testers uh, encountered what he called, he eventually called ironwood, ironwood trees. And the tree itself is an organic carbon, so it can be consumed as, or utilized as either, if you harvest it, you can choose to harvest it as organics, or you can choose to harvest it as carbon, and either way it would fit the role of that. But since it was such, it was listed under an exotic plant, he chose to research it, got a hit, then discovered that uh, it had some kind of mystical or, or unique property. This is where the game, the, the quote house lord or the game master, because it's the same person, uh, decides exactly what that might be. Now, there's several, uh, uh, the, I've got these rules of common sense that dictate certain things are not acceptable. So you have to work within the parameters of that. In this case, uh, he decided to continue research on it, utilizing the system of small charts available and determined that this material could be turned into uh, or utilized in, in lieu of steel, which is a huge boon for him. Because now he could he could create level zero, little fall little small family logging operations and larger logging companies to go harvest this and he and he named it Melnac so he go harvest Melnac wood and discovered it had uh, several properties through additional research. One was, like I said, it can be used in lieu of steel. So when he started manufacturing things like ship components and, and builds, especially housing, and he substituted this harvested material for the manufactured steel, allowing that steel to be utilized in other projects because he had a, a low steel production capability, his Melnac wood, uh, his ships took on this somewhat organic look. You know, look, the guys are building a ship out of out of wood is what some people would argue. And of course it wasn't, it was a very durable component to be add to these projects. The second property he discovered was it was moderately laser resistant. So if polished to a high gleam, it would diminish the, the damage so it gave a damage reduction modifier to the substance. So he could produce light body armor with Melnac breastplates, and the breastplates had this appearance of a highly polished purplish wood, and in the benefit of them being, you know, a stylish and unique to his house, but also gave his troopers, his soldiers, and anybody else wearing them a 25% reduction in damage from laser-based weaponry.
uh, personal scale. Uh, if you use them as armor plating uh, for his ships, in the production of armor plating, he could also add that laser resistance to the uh, ships that he was building. Now, that did nothing for kinetic energy-based weapons and, and uh, missile weapons, so there was plenty of stuff out there in plasma, because plasma and uh, lasers are not the same thing. It's a different element. And plenty of weapons out there could buy, you know, had the stuff had no effect on. So, down the road down the road when other players came into to playing the beta test and set up their houses and eventually started to become aware of these other existing player houses and start initiating trade amongst themselves Melmac would became uh, an, uh, under a fourth you know a fourth thing if you look at it from this perspective a, a a really good export for him so he was able to export melnac wood in significant numbers uh either in the steel format or in the more polished uh, uh component where it was you know manufactured materials or items so he, he was just he decided to ship uh, a certain amount of body armor to a neighbor and he could charge more because we're using a more exotic or mis mystical substance and that's just one of many of these cases that popped up. So there you have that on just number three.